Hey everybody, it's Brian. So at the end of March, I started an experiment with angel wing begonia propagation. If you didn't see that, I put cuttings with different numbers of nodes, anywhere from zero to three nodes in pots to see if the number of nodes would make a difference in how well or how fast they propagated. Things generally went as expected, but there was a surprise that I'll show you before the video ends. Let's get into the results. So it's been about 10 weeks now and looking at where each of these is at. The plants with zero nodes will start there. Unsurprisingly, these haven't grown any leaves at all. You can see the tops are a little bit dried off and this is not really a surprise. We would have expected this uh, just because you always hear the mantra that you gotta have a node in every one of your cuttings to make it work. So far, this seems to have been proven true. Looking at the plants that had one node each, all three of these have growth. You can see this one's doing very well. It's formed two new leaves. This other one has also developed two leaves, although they are a little bit smaller. The third one here is just starting to sprout a new leaf, but very impressive showing for the one node crew. They all are sprouting new growth and have done really well. Next, we'll take a look at two nodes. Wah, wah. Now, the first one here is showing a bit of new growth in two spots, so it's not a complete dud. The other one here is dried out quite a bit. The third, you'll notice, is also dried out above the top node and has nothing growing on it. Now, these last two, they do still look healthy at the bottom. They're still green and they could eventually push out some new growth, but compared to the one node crew, these did not do so well. Now let's take a look at the cuttings that had three nodes. There are some things happening here. It's not a total dud. Uh, the first one actually looks pretty good with two new leaves. The second one does have a small bit of growth on it, although not very much, just a tiny little bit here showing. The third one is completely dried out. It's probably done for. I don't think this is going to sprout anything no matter how long I leave it. So what do I take away from all this? I know it was a small sample size, but for me, there were a couple of meaningful observations. The multi-node shoots, a lot of them dried up at the top. Some of them dried up completely. So as far as the extra nodes go, they didn't provide any positive benefit from what I can see and potentially caused the pieces to dry out faster. From a pure leaf count, the one node crew has four new leaves plus another one starting. The two node group has no leaves at all. The three node group grew two leaves. So from that perspective, the cuttings with one node did much better than the others. Now I made sure that the test group got the same amount of light each day. But what I noticed with the other angel wing begonias that I propagated at the same time, light seemed to have a very important impact on which ones grew and which ones didn't grow. The ones in better lighting grew a lot better than the ones in less lighting. From a timeline perspective, it took about four weeks for the first new growth to appear, and it's been 10 weeks since I started the experiment, and we've got visible growth on six of the nine cuttings that had nodes. The other few propagations I did of this plant are all starting to look like real plants instead of sticks in the dirt. Overall, the single test node group did the best, and I will continue to propagate these begonias using one node per cutting. I just didn't see any benefit really for the multi-nodes and the one nodes all worked well. Now, before I end, here's the thing that really surprised me. From the zero node group, two of the three cuttings have actually grown roots. They still haven't grown leaves, but they grew roots. And I didn't expect that actually. I expected them to have nothing happen to just dry out and be dead. Um, so it's interesting to me that they did actually grow roots. I'm going to set these off to the side and continue to water them to see if I do get any growth out of them at all at any point. If I do, 
I'll provide an update on that. If you don't ever hear about this experiment again, that's because they didn't grow anything and are probably in some yard waste container now. Thanks for tuning in. I'll probably plan on doing some sort of light experiment the next time around when I propagate some more of these and, and see just how different propagation happens in different lighting conditions from mostly dark to mostly light. We'll see how that ends up. Like and follow for more experiments and other tips and tricks on growing tropical and subtropical plants indoors and out in cold weather environments.